Helene Gerber's The Book of the Epic, The World's Great Epics Told in Story, presents a comprehensive overview of the world's most significant epic narratives. Gerber's work is an ambitious attempt to encapsulate the grandeur and cultural importance of these epic tales within a single volume. By doing so, she not only introduces readers to the broad spectrum of epic literature but also emphasizes the universal themes that permeate these stories across different cultures and epochs. Gerber's narrative style is accessible and engaging, making complex and lengthy epics approachable for a broad audience. She distills these grand narratives into concise and compelling stories, preserving their essential elements while making them digestible for modern readers. This approach allows her to maintain the essence of the original works, including their moral and philosophical underpinnings, without overwhelming the reader with excessive detail. One of the strengths of Gerber's book is its ability to highlight the cultural and historical contexts of the epics. She provides insightful commentary on the significance of each epic within its respective culture, shedding light on the values, beliefs, and historical circumstances that shaped these stories. For instance, in her retelling of the Gilead, Gerber not only recounts the tale of the Trojan War but also delves into the Greek ideals of heroism, honor, and the human condition. Similarly, her account of the Mahabharata explores the intricate web of duty, righteousness, and destiny that defines the epic's moral landscape. The book also underscores the thematic universality of epic literature. Gerber illustrates how themes such as the struggle between good and evil, the hero's journey, and the quest for immortality recur across different epics, regardless of their cultural origins. This thematic coherence suggests a shared human experience and a collective attempt to understand the world through storytelling. For example, the quest for immortality is a central theme in both the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Ramayana, reflecting a common human desire to transcend the limitations of mortality. Gerber's work is particularly notable for its inclusivity. She does not confine her selection to the Western canon but also incorporates epics from Eastern, African, and indigenous traditions. This inclusivity broadens the reader's perspective and fosters an appreciation for the rich diversity of the world's literary heritage. By presenting epics such as the Sundiata from West Africa and the Popol Vuh from the Mayan civilization, Gerber challenges the Eurocentric bias that often dominates literary studies and underscores the global nature of epic storytelling. However, the book is not without its limitations. Gerber's summaries, while effective in conveying the main plot and themes, sometimes lack the depth and nuance of the original texts. The brevity of the retellings can lead to a loss of the intricate details and stylistic features that give the original epics their unique flavor. Additionally, Gerber's interpretations, though insightful, are occasionally influenced by her own cultural and temporal perspective, which may not fully capture the intentions of the original authors. Despite these limitations, the book of the epic remains a valuable resource for both novice readers and scholars. It serves as an excellent introduction to the world of epic literature, providing a gateway to further exploration of these monumental works. Gerber's passion for the subject is evident throughout the book, and her ability to convey the majesty and significance of these stories is commendable. In conclusion, Helena Gerber's The Book of the Epic is a testament to the enduring power of epic narratives. Through her retellings, she not only preserves the legacy of these great works but also illuminates the shared human experience that they embody. Her book is a celebration of the epic form, a recognition of its universal appeal, and an invitation to readers to embark on their own journeys through the world's great stories.